Welcome everyone. We are so excited that you're joining us today, whether you're joining us in person or online. If you are new to CHC today, we would like you to let us know by texting the word hello to 949-446-1110. And I also want to let you know that you can stay up to date with everything going on here in City Harvest Church by following us on social media. We have many different platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Periscope, and Twitch. And if you are following us on social media on Facebook, be sure to check in and share our service by starting a watch party. Or if you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click that little notification bell. Well, we hope that you enjoy the service. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to City Harvest Church. We're so glad that you guys are here, whether you're in person or watching online. And you know, the Word of God says in 2 Corinthians 3 that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And because the Spirit of God lives in us, we have that freedom. So I want to invite you to please stand with me. Let's get ready to praise freely, worship freely, and allow the Holy Spirit to move. Amen. Are we ready to jump into the river of God this morning? The water is stirring, okay? Put your hands together. There is a river where goodness flows. There is a fountain that drowns the road. Rising, rising There is a current 
How many joyful people in this place this morning? Yes, I see a big smile there. Great. God, you're my joy. Joy. There's a joy in my soul. I can't explain it, but I know it's you.
step into an environment, an atmosphere like this, and feel your closeness, your nearness, and your power. Lord, we submit ourselves. We submit this service into your hands. Come and do what you want to do. We're not here to run an order of service or go through the, the routine of church. God, we're here to hear from heaven, and we're here to create a platform for you to speak. Lord, so come and use us. Come and speak to us. Open our ears to hear what you're saying. Our eyes to see what it is you're doing in this time, in this neighborhood, in this region. God, we avail ourselves. We bless your name. We bless your name more than just what you can do for us, our families, our work, and our personal lives. God, we're here simply to say that you are awesome. God, you are incredible. God, and you're worthy of more praise than people in this room. God, you're worthy of all the praise on earth, all the praise in heaven. You're so good, so worthy, so worthy. We will not stop singing. We will not stop praising. We will not stop worshiping and declaring and speaking who you are, Father, until the things change in this region, until things change, we will continue to declare your name, Father, because your name is above every single thing. It's above any virus. It's above the anxiety and the fear that's crippling, above fear. Lord, your name brings healing. Your bring, name brings life. So we only come to that name. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Have the service. Have your way. We love you. We honor you. Lord, and if you're blessed, can you just give them one more shout of praise in this house? Come on, can we lift up the atmosphere? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's good. He's good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We believe that there's power in the, in the presence of God. Even if you're watching at home, we feel that when you came in to watch, you can walk to the kitchen after the praise and worship and be changed. <laughs> so, <laughs> awesome. All right, and as we, as we worship, now let's prepare our hearts to give as we invite Pastor Anwin to take up the offering. Let's give her a clap. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to be in the house of God. The house of God is so important because it's a time where we can come really refreshed, come get together, come build each other up and see each other's faces. Amen. But I want to encourage you with this word today. I know it's been quite um, trying lately, with, especially with the second round of COVID coming in. And I just want to build up and encourage you and bring hope to you, okay? So in Jeremiah 29, 4 verse 5, God says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who are carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and dwell in them, 
plant gardens and eat their fruit. See, because the Israelites turned their back on God, God allowed them to be taken captive by the Babylonians. But even though they turned their back on God, God did not turn His back on them. And that's why He said, told them how to live. Yes, they were imprisoned, but God did not want that spirit and that mentality of imprisonment and to come into their hearts. They didn't, God did not want that mentality of slavery that they had in Egypt to take creep back into their hearts. And that's why He said, plant and build. Because in the midst of their circumstances, God still wanted them to keep on growing and expanding. See, this is what God wanted. He did not want the Israelites to trust and depend on their captors for their provision. He wanted them to keep on trusting their, Him because in the midst of his cap, their captivity, God wanted them to prosper. Regardless of their circumstances and where they were at, God wanted them to prosper. See, there's another few words that are synonymous to captivity. And it is imprisonment, confinement, and restraint. Have any of us felt confined, restrained, restrained in these times? We've been put into our homes. Yes, America has been blessed because we have not, we've been able to move a bit more freely than other parts of the world. We can still take our beautiful walks around the block and enjoy nature. And we can still go easily to the stores but in other countries it's been very more it's been more restrained and I know we have viewers on online that are in different countries and I have a sister in South Africa the, she can only leave her house when she goes to the grocery store she cannot even walk around the block I have parents who live in Israel and because of the age they cannot do grocery shopping they have to have somebody to go do grocery shopping for them they're not allowed in the stores and they can only go nine feet so that is a real constraint and a real confinement and yes we have felt this confinement but during this time God does not want us to start having our minds and hearts confined and restrained see in the middle of the restrictions that God we have in the natural God is not restricted and the Spirit of God in us is also not restricted. Regardless of where we are, God still wants us to prosper. God still wants us to place our trust and our faith in Him. We do not put our faith and trust in the government. We do not pay, put our faith and trust in stimulus checks. We don't put our faith and trust in the tax refunds that we are getting. We put our faith in God Almighty. Mighty God, Jehovah God. I don't want you to start spending all your money on the internet and buying on Amazon. I want you to carry on sowing into the house of God and building His house. Because the Word of God says that when we build God's house, He is faithful to build our own. I want to challenge you this morning. Many of us have come to a new level of faith in our giving. I do not want you to retreat. I don't want you to pull back. I don't want you to lose the ground that you have gained in the spiritual world. I want you to give. I want you to give regardless of the circumstances. Don't let the circumstances dictate how you give. I want you to give limitlessly. I want you to give with a heart of freedom, regardless of what is going on. And I love how God addressed the Israelites. He said, I am the Lord of hosts. I am God Almighty. As we sang, God, you are above it all. And today, be reminded in the midst of the circumstances, in the midst of the uncertainties, have the confidence that God is God Almighty. He is Jehovah God. He is above it all. And when we put our trust in God, we will not be ashamed. Amen. God has called us to be fruitful and to multiply and to grow. 
don't retreat. Let's sow and let's build the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. There's a few ways to give. You can text CHCUS to the number 77977. And there you can also give through the church app through Pushpay. You can mail in your check to the address on the screen. Or you can call to the number on the screen. Or you can give in person today. Give your offering to an usher. Amen. Amen. I just want to bless you today. Father, we just thank you that you are God and you are almighty and you are not held hostage by the circumstances of this day. Father, you are limitless and Father, you are unrestricted. Father, I just pray for the spirit of faith to rise up inside of every believer in this house today and on who has been tuned in online. Father, I pray that we will give confidently, limitless, we'll give largely into your kingdom, into building your house this day. Father, I pray you'll bless every seed given in this house today. I pray that you'll bless every giver, bless their homes. And Father, I pray that you'll give us a greater revelation of who you are, our Father who is our provider and our protector. Father, we give you all the honor and all the glory today in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen, Amen. Everyone, I, um, we're going to run the high, harvest highlights. Amen. Guys, I have great news to share with you. It is not too late to join a connect group. Connect groups are happening via Zoom every week on Tuesdays and Fridays at 7 p.m. So if you're not yet a part of a connect group and would like to sign up and learn more information, you can text the word CONNECT to 949-446-1110. As we resume indoor services, we encourage you to RSVP by texting SAFE to the number on the screen. There you'll be led to our website where the CDC guidelines will be read, acknowledged, and signed by you. There will be face mask requirement, there will be sanitation stations, and we will respect social distancing. We look forward to seeing you. Support the vision of CHC by bringing the gospel message around the world. Your giving enables us to facilitate online streaming to our global community. You can give by scanning the QR code or go to the PushPay app to make your donations. Thank you so much for partnering with us. Be sure to scan the QR code on the screen to stay updated with upcoming events. And you can also visit us on our website at chc.org. Yes, Amen, amen. Come on, are you glad to be in the house of God? Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, I just uh, want to say a b great blessing and thanks to our pastors, Pastor Derek and Susan. They're on vacation, well needed, resting with their family in Virginia. So remember to keep them in prayer. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, Pastor Troy, if you guys don't know who the I am, I'm uh, the black guy and, uh, <laughs> who loves you. Amen. <laughs> but we're here, uh, we're going to give you a word today. And uh, we are excited that we have made this kind of decision to, uh, to stay open right now when certain churches have closed. And we've done that because we want to be able to minister to people in person and very, we feel it's very important right now. So um, I wanna share this word with you because God has really placed this on my heart to, uh, to release this to the body of Christ. And it's so important right now we understand what is required from us right now as Christians. And I don't know about you, but as I go out onto the landscape of social media and I'm on watching people out in public and things like that, uh, you know, I, what I'm noticing is that we have a ways to go in the body of Christ. Yeah. Come on, amen. Yeah. Now, I'm not knocking the church, but I'm going to, you know, give her a little bit. Here, come on, straighten up. So here's what the Word of God teaches us, that we have two kingdoms in conflict right now. And if you don't see that, it is so obvious, it's painfully obvious that we're seeing the collision in our country of two different systems. And the reason why we're seeing that is, is because we in the kingdom of God must understand that our role in times like this is not to be silent and not to be palatable, but to be the voice of God into the culture. Because the kingdom has a culture. The kingdom of darkness has a culture and the kingdom of God has a culture. The kingdom of darkness has systems Come on, amen? Yeah. 
and citizens, and the kingdom of God has a culture and citizens. And so what we see is these are very different ideas that are coming into conflict. Now, what we see right now is that I have never seen the kingdom of God so thoroughly resisted as I'm seeing right now. Every idea, everything that uh, the, the word of God the kingdom of God stands for is being thoroughly resisted right now. And here's the reason why we're being resisted is because we have not modeled the heart of the father. So it's easy to resist us because we're coming at things from the same angle as the kingdom of darkness. Here's what the kingdom culture of the kingdom of darkness is, in case you didn't know that and how we cannot ever be aligned with this. We see it in second Timothy chapter 2, or chapter 3, verse 2 through 5. And it says this, uh, Paul tells Timothy, be careful for in this time, for men will be lovers of themselves. Now, I'm not trying to say nothing, but y'all need to count how many selfies are on your Instagram. Amen. (laughs) Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, Oh my God, are we seeing that right now? Disobedient to parents or authority, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving. This is talking about a group of the characteristics of the the kingdom of darkness. Unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal. Have you been watching what's been going on in our cities? The brutality despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, that means they cannot be reasoned with, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form, now this is important now, having a form of godliness but denying its power from such people turn away. That form of godliness takes place when we use scripture to beat people up. Mm. When we have to post something or we say something to someone, and the whole goal is to beat them. Now, in the kingdom, we cannot operate in the same culture. And this is what we do in the kingdom of God. In the world, there's winners and losers. Every conflict has winners and losers. And so what you're seeing right now is that there is one group trying to beat another group trying to beat them into submission, cancel them. And if you're not careful, you can align yourself in the same way as a Christian and you're trying to beat the other side. But this is how the world operates in conflict. This is not how the kingdom operates in conflict because in the kingdom, it's never about winning and losing. It's always about the relationship. Always. So I could be wrong. I could feel you're wrong. And I could be in disagreement with you, but I'm never going to let that disagreement get to a point where we lose the relationship between us. There's people cutting off family members because who they voted for. That's crazy. There's people not talking to other people because of a political view that will change in a couple of years. There's people unfriended. My wife did such an amazing job last week talking about reconciliation and how that is what's missing from the conversation right now for us as believers is we're not talking about reconciliation and repentance. We're still trying to figure out who's right and who's wrong. This is not the culture of the kingdom of God. Jesus said this, we are to be salt and light, Matthew 5 Verse 13 says, you are the salt of the earth, but, everybody say but, but But if you've lost your savor or flavor where you are salted, then henceforth you are good for nothing and they be cast out and trodden upon by men. Right now we're seeing that they are triding upon us as a church. Because we must have our flavor right. Come on, amen. We cannot align with the kingdom of darkness. We're not here to win, guys. We already won, in case you didn't know that. Amen. I wish I'd get some amens. I thought I was in spirit filled church in here. Come on, don't let me pull my hanky out on you now. Come on. They put it up here for a reason. This is my go to. If y'all don't say amen, good. Amen. Start waving it at you. 
Listen to this. If we are not salt, then we are not useful. And we want to be useful. We want to have, bring meaning to what's going on in the earth right now. And only we are the only ones that can do that. We're the only ones that can elevate the conversation away from temporal things into eternal things. And we're the only ones that can show forth the heart of God. We're not talking about just being silent and being meek and mild and, oh, we don't want conflict. Yes, because we're in a conflict. But what do we bring to that conflict as believers? And so this is what Jesus exhorted us to. He said this. He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. That means that he was a perfect representation of the Father in the earth. But here's what we're doing right now, if you're not careful, is we're trying to be the best representation of ourselves. We're not trying to be like Jesus. We're trying to be the best version of us. And so we're comparing ourselves with ourselves. We're looking at our heart through the lens of I'm better than them. I'm smarter than them. I'm less wicked than them. And we're not comparing ourselves through the lens of who Jesus is. And Jesus said, if you've seen the Father, you've seen me. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Listen, in our Christianity, it is extremely important that you define your finish line. You define what it is you are going towards. And if you're just going towards a little better life and a little more blessing and a little more understanding and a little more victory, but you have not defined the finish in your life as you must absolutely carry the heart of the Father into the world. That is your highest calling is to manifest the heart of your Father in every aspect of your life. That is the finish line, if you're a believer, to be like Jesus. And Jesus was a mature son. He was someone that completely represented the Father. And in the scriptures, Jesus is only referred to as what's called a weo son. That means a mature, full son who is able to manifest into the world his Father's heart. That's what we're called to. Come on, amen. But the Bible also talks about four other kinds of sons <laughs> throughout the scriptures that we have to be careful that we don't fall into these categories because they're all believers. But, and the Bible refers to all of them as children of God, as sons of God. But we don't want to be like the beginning sons. And so this is a spectrum in our Christian maturity that the Bible demonstrates. And it starts off with the nepio son. Just like natural sons, we have to come from being a baby, a nepios, into being a full-grown son, a weos. And we must, at all times, try to be moving ourselves towards that weos maturity in our Christian, in our spiritual life. So what's a nepios? A nepios is spoken about in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. This is a powerful thing because the nepios son is a son who is just a baby. Everybody say a baby. baby. Oh, come on, say it a little louder. That's how you know you're not one. Come on, amen. (laughs) It says, brethren, I could not speak unto you, verse 1, 1 Corinthians 3. It says, brethren, I could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto nepiosis in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hereunto you are not able to bear it. Neither yet now are you able. He's talking to believers about their posture in the kingdom of God, that they cannot handle strong preaching. It drives them out from the kingdom because I don't like the way that sounds. Well, you're not supposed to like it because you're not in agreement with it. That's why it's being preached to you so that you can come into agreement with it. Your playlist cannot be stacked with only the songs that you like. Some of the songs got to be what you need. Oh, hallelujah. I like a good playlist, but sometimes, you know, you need some Bible in there. Come on, amen. And many times what happens in how you know you're a Napio son is that you are constantly, constantly in conflict. You never leave conflict with the people around you because love is not on your agenda. Being right is on your agenda. That's how you know you're a napios. And any kind of conflict, you 
dissolve the relationship, you leave because you don't see value as a Napios, as a child in relationships. You only see need. And listen, how you know your Napios is every person you meet is either a key to your provision or a threat to your existence. What can they do for me? They can't do anything for me. I can't be around them. That's a Napios. <laughs> or can they help me in some way? Nepios are always complaining about their provision and their protection. It's a constant source of complaining. God, when? God, why haven't I gotten this? God, when are you going to bless? When is this money coming? And it's a, a sign of when, when you are caught up in whining, complaining, that's a sign of being Nepios. You know, we had, when we had our first child, Ariella. She's working a camera over here. Um, you know, we, she would cry at these weird times, and so we were concerned. So we went to our doctor. And we said, she's crying, and we don't know what's going on. And so our doctor said, babies cry. It was such a revelation. And I'm like, we, we, no, they, they have no way to communicate. So everything is crying. Happy they cry, sad they cry, uncomfortable they cry. And so we always thought we had to fix it. But he's like, that's what babies do. Let them cry. And I was shocked by that because it could just be anything. And one, any kind of little discomfort causes nepiosis to start to complain. I don't like the way you taught that. I had people come up to me after a sermon and go, I don't like the way you said that. I don't like the, what you taught, Pastor Troy. And I'm like, well, I'm not taking it back. <laughs> so one of us is going to have to change, and it ain't me. I'm sorry that you... Now, listen, I, I'm sorry that it, it's causing you discomfort, but that's what it's designed to do because you don't grow unless you're out of your comfort zone. Nepiosis will refuse to leave their comfort zone. Nepiosis are always concerned about their blessing and their inheritance, but you don't give the keys to your car to a two-year-old. And this is why blessing can elude us because God, have you ever seen those people who've won the lottery and then three years later they're broke and their children are in trouble and everything is falling apart? You know why? It's because they weren't mature enough to handle that kind of wealth. And so God loves you too much to give you something that will destroy you. And so if you want to come up, you want that promotion, you want that level of increase, stop focusing on the increase and the blessing and focus on your maturity. Because it's not a blessing God is trying to give you. He's trying to give mature sons their inheritance. It's better than a blessing. Come on. That's another sermon, though. Come on. Amen. <laughs> Listen now. The second level is a pation. A pation is a mature uh, child, a maturing child, but still a child. Uh, they're old enough to proclaim and understand the word, but never walk in it. And so we know what the Bible says, and we can quote it, but it's not manifesting in our life because of our approach to this. In 1 Corinthians 14, 20, we see this. Brethren, be not pations in your understanding. Howbeit in malice, be like children, but in understanding, be mature, be like men. Pations lack understanding of how God works. If you see 1 Corinthians 15, 29, they do not understand how God maneuvers. Because one of the names of God is Jehovah Sneaky. Come on. <laughs> Y'all didn't know that? Come on. <laughs> He'll set you up in a minute. And you won't, we'll walk right into something with him. And you'll be like, what happened, Lord? He goes, I, you know, I was trying to get your attention. And so when you don't understand how God works and you're constantly questioning his goodness, that's what pations do. They're always in conflict between the word and what's happening in their life. So they know the word. They know it's true but none of it's manifesting. And so they're always in conflict with God saying, God, where is this? Where is that? Not understanding that the purpose of a season of your growth is for you to begin to come into things. It doesn't happen overnight. And this is what pations say. They go to meetings. They go to conferences. They are, they're, listen, they're walking in blessing, but not consistently. Their life is full of ups and downs. They experience the Father's love, but only at conferences or in altars, or in moments. It's never consistent in their life. Yeah. And so the patients go to meetings, conferences, and they go, oh my God, I, my life will never be the same. I heard 
the message, and it's completely transformed my life. No, it didn't. It impacted your life. It got your attention. But the only way it transforms your life is when you walk it out, when the conference is over. And if you think it's about that moment where you received this revelation and you got this impact in your life and you think that's what's changing you, then you'll chase those moments instead of hunkering down in your life and walking things out step by step into maturity and not just being someone that has the conference schedule for every great speaker. I've been Verdict. I've been Hillsong. Come on. And, and those meetings were powerful. They were powerful, but you ain't. Until you allow the Holy Spirit to take those words and work them into your life. Till then, you'll be able to quote stuff. You'll be able to repeat what you heard of the speakers. You'll be able to say, yeah, like it's your own, but you'll never see it manifest in your life if you're operating like a patio and you'll be an echo and never a voice. The world needs voices right now. Come on, amen. Turn to your neighbor say that. Guy's preaching pretty good right now. <laughs> okay, third level is a technon. This is like a teenager. A technon is a type of son that's mentioned in 1 John 2, 12. He says this, I run unto you, little technons, because your sins are forgiven, uh, forgiven you for his, for his name's sake. So, so technons are good at sin management. They know how to manage their sin, but they never are fully delivered from it. And so this is what happens here. As a technon, you begin to come into certain parts of the word of God, like you understand your authority, you understand your rights, come on, in the kingdom, and those rights give you access to blessing. And you understand that you're blessed, that you're, you're loved by God as a technon. Come on, amen? You understand that you're loved by God, but yet you don't love others like God loves you. And so everything is about you personally. And in the Technon, it, they, they, they've overcome the evil and they've learned how to, to manage the if, issues in their life so they're not breaking forth on them all the time. So they have an ability to manage sin, but they use legalism to manage their sin. And so you hear Technon say things like this. Well, I don't have a TV. You got a TV? That means I'm holier than you because you got a TV and I don't. No, that just means that you're managing your sin by getting rid of your television and not dealing with what's in your heart that's drawing you to the wrong type of shows. Wow. Mm -hmm. well, I don't go to movies, Pastor Troy. Well, you're missing out. There's some fine films out there. <laughs> fine ones that'll bless you. Come on, amen. Yeah. And it's, it, the absence of these things does not make you stronger. It just allows you to manage what's going on in your heart. And technons become very skilled at managing their problems, their sins. They wall it off and they use legalism. But legalism will never produce transformation in your life. And so legalism, the Bible calls it in 1 Corinthians, the administration of death. That means whenever you have to use legalism in your life or in someone else's life, it will never produce life. It will always produce death. And so technons will have everything in order but their life will never have true victory in it. They have discipline. They'll stay away from the wrong people. They won't go to the wrong stuff. But in their heart, they will never be like Christ because that's not their goal. Their goal is to manage their sin, not surrender their sin to God. I meet a lot of men like this in the body of Christ who struggle with pornography or struggle with other things, and they, they have walled it off, man. They got every filter, they got every block, everything you can think of that they won't have any access, they won't see anything wrong, but yet they still struggle because those things are legalism if they're not done to bring, you need to constrain, come on, amen. Yeah. I'm not saying don't do that. If you gotta do it, do it. But understand that's not the fix, that's a constraint. And at the time, that constraint will break down. Legalism has no ability to transform your life. Rules and regulations don't transform you. They only constrain you. And maturity says, I'm growing because I'm allowing the Holy Spirit. I'm being vulnerable. I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to go deeper and deeper into my life and deal with stuff because I'm opening up the door. Technons operate in immature love. Listen, 1 John 3, 18 says this. My little children, my little technons, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but indeed, 
And in truth, technons are always concerned about themselves and their own rights, not anybody else's. So this is where you see a lot of technon sons right now in the kingdom. People that refuse to wear masks in a grocery store. It's my right. I don't have to listen to anyone. Yeah, but there's people that don't have the confidence that you do. They don't have the information you may have. And so they're scared. They're fearful. And we just want to be kind to folks. It has nothing to do with me bowing to the government or Mr. Newsom. All these things people say, and you're missing the point that we're not here to be right. We're here to love people and show them the Father's heart. And that's more important than your political position and what you feel like is happening right now. Lost a few amens on that one. Hey, it's tight, but it's right. You're missing the point if that's what you're arguing about. That's what you're fussing over. Because we want to walk in love with people. Above all things, as a Christian, we want to manifest the Father's heart. And the Father's heart is that these people fearful. They don't have that confidence that you do in God. They don't know God. They're just full of fear because of what they've been consuming. And so, yeah, we want to be able to vote, speak into them. But, you know, if they see us, with all they say is you don't care. That's all they see. And that's more important what you think is how you perceived. Yeah. Come on, amen. I better get off of this and go on. They all give me some looks like. <laughs> Technon sons are operating this kind of immature love that can never, ever fully reconcile with people. Like my wife talked about last week, they only want to be right. They only want to win. So they're never, ever in a conflict, the goal is never reconciliation. The goal is to beat the other person with their knowledge. You see people arguing in the comment sections on Facebook as if any of that was ever going to change anybody's opinion. I mean, go in the town four or five deep in their <laughs> post returns. And every time I see that, I think, what do you think is going to happen? This person is going to read that and go, oh, no, they are headstrong and you're not going to win them with your argument you're going to win them with your love let's go a little further fourth one neokos type of son right neokos type of son is a young man full of vigor this is the most deceptive this is a young man full of vigor sharp skilled in preaching this is what uh, neokos son is in john 2 14 yeah just regular john not you know uh, Big John, okay? I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. So as a Neokos type of son, you have come into your gifts and your ministry and your calling. You are a leader more than, uh, more than in, in, anybody else in the, in the kingdom. You have a platform. Um, you have, uh, you've developed your gifts and your ability to move in the spirit so you can prophesy, you can, you can, uh, you can pray in tongues, you can, you can move in the gifts of the spirit. All these things you've done because you've developed this ability, you paid attention, and you've learned things in the kingdom of God. So it's very hard for anyone to see because technons have it all together on the outside. And so no one would ever challenge, uh, or I'm sorry, Neokos has all together on the outside. So no one would ever see what's really going on because they're too busy looking. The kingdom of the God doesn't care. Many people in the kingdom don't care about your character. They only care about your gift. So when they see your gift and your charisma in operation, they step back and go, oh, I wish I could be like them. Because they they know the discipline that was taken. They know, come on, that you guys have had to hunker down to get to this place. And it's deceptive because you will stop being confronted by the people around you. No one can see the problem with a neokos. And this is why every one of us in this room has seen someone in ministry that we thought was amazing, and then we see this catastrophic failure in their life, and we go, how could that have happened? They were neokosis. Yeah. Never dealt with the one thing in their life that kept them from moving into being a weos type of son. And listen, 
What keeps us from being mature many times is not our discipline, it's not our devotion, it's not, I mean, many of us in this room are very devoted to Christ, very devoted to the things of God. We will never turn back from it, okay? Come on, amen. We have learned our ministry. We know what God is doing in our life. We know the call of God on our life. That's a very high level uh, in the kingdom of God. Come on, would you agree? There are many people still trying to figure out their gifts, but a Nyoko's type of son already knows that and is already operating it. Many churches are led and pastored by Neokoses. Many ministries are led by Neokoses. And here's the thing. This is how subtle it is. Let's go over to Matthew chapter 19. Are you here? Come on, amen. Matthew chapter 19, this is a story of a rich young ruler. And this, this rich young ruler comes to Jesus and he asks him this question. And this is amazing because Jesus, uh, Jehovah Sneaky, come on, lays this amazing trap for this guy. And uh, let's pick it up in, uh, in verse 19, okay? Verse 19 says, uh, honor, uh, I'm sorry, verse 18. He said unto him, Jesus said, thou shalt do not murder. This guy comes to him in verse 17, and he, say, he calls unto me, and he says, uh, uh, you know, good master, what must I do to inter- inher- inherit eternal life? And what he's really asking is, how do I get to the next level? How many folks in here are looking for the next level? Yeah. All right, I'm going to show you how to get it right now. <laughs> verse 17, Jesus answers him. And he says, why do you call me good? There is none good but one, that is God. If thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. And he said unto him, which one? Woo. Now God says, keep the commandments. And you say, uh, which one should I keep? How about all of them? Yeah. Come on, amen? amen yeah. So it tells you there's something not right in this guy's thinking right up front. And then Jesus proceeds to give him the lowest level of commandments. He says this now. He says, thou shalt do not murder. <laughs> don't commit adultery. Don't steal. And don't lie. Come on, amen. amen. Now, when he's quoting the Ten Commandments here. And if you understand how and who, how the demands came and why they came and who they came to. And, you know, there's guys teaching whole sermon series on the Ten Commandments. And it's Ten Commandments are hanging in a courthouse because if you can't obey them, you should be in jail. That's the lowest level of human conduct is the Ten Commandments. I mean, he wrote those to a group of slaves coming out of captivity. And the slave culture was so bad. Have you read the law? I mean, they had to tell them, don't eat horse meat. Don't murder your neighbor for their wife. Don't murder each other. Don't, don't lie, bear false witness. These are, these, are, these are boilerplate human activity. This is not high-level Christianity. This is, even people in the world shouldn't do this. Yeah. Come on, amen. They, people who don't even know the Bible know this is wrong because it's, it was, he had to start the Ten Commandments with the lowest level of human conduct to help them come out of slave chaos debauchery that they were in. The Egyptians didn't care what they did. They just made sure they showed up for work. There was no law. There was no order in the slave encampment. Everybody was kill or be killed, eat or be eaten. And so God said, I got to break that and give you the Ten Commandments. Now, if we're operating as the Ten Commandments, uh, there's a ways for us to go. Come on, amen. You know what's not in the Ten Commandments? Love each other as I've loved you. That's another level. Come on. That's what's not there because he didn't even expect that from them. He just said, stop killing each other. (laughs) There's higher levels to this. Now, this guy goes, yeah, I've done all those. (laughs) I've kept all those commandments. And then Jesus says, one thing do you lack? He says, honor your father and mother. But he says, one thing do you lack? He says, go and sell all you have and give to the poor, and you will be perfect. If you want to be perfect, you want to be mature, sell what you have and give it to the poor. Now, this young man says, uh, verse 22, but the one man heard these things, and he went away sorrowful. He went away sorrowful. He didn't say, I'm going to try, Jesus. Immediately, his whole continence and his whole direction, the trajectory of his life went another direction because he says, I can't do that. Many times... What's keeping us 
as neokosis and not allowing us to go into being weosis. It's not a bunch of things. It's the one thing that you won't surrender to God. The one hurt, the one idea about your life that you will not give to him. And that is the thing that will always cause you to move backwards on this scale of sonship. I'll never remember you to move forward. And listen, the reason why we do this, let me be real with you. You, you, you can struggle with things for many years. And the reason that you, you learn how to wall it in, you can be very sharp, still move, practice and, and uh, polish your gifts and your talents and still never deal with this one little thing in the crevice of your heart. And, and in Holy Spirit, his job is to search out the deep things. Come on, amen. And reveal them to you. So no one else will reveal this to you. And this is why we'll stay immature. And we won't be able to move into a higher level of being a representation of the Father is because we won't allow the Holy Spirit to dig in to those hidden areas of our life and deal with the one thing we refuse to surrender to God. Can I get like one amen? Yeah. All right. I just want to make sure you're all breathing still. Come on. This is what happens when we don't do that. Our, you know, I, I, I have a very strong uh, word of faith background, which means, you know, I didn't have a doctrine of suffering <laughs> until I started to suffer. Come on. <laughs> and then you quickly get one. Amen. Because you go, well, why is this happening? I need more faith. But then you start to figure this out, that this is this life unfolding on us. And being a very, very, very good Christian doesn't exempt you from life. Right? Amen? If you think that, that there's some mystical level you can get to in Christianity where you have no more problems, then you are playing on the wrong playing field. And you're never going to win. Come on, amen. But if you understand that the things that come up in our life, God, doesn't, God is not the author of them. Many times what the author of them is just life. And many times it's our bad decisions that cause, bring us into hardship. We make some really bad decisions. And then we're asking God to get us out of them. But God's like, well... Let's wait a little bit and let's walk this out because in this hardship, you're going to learn patience. Jesus, even though he was a son, a mature son, the Bible says that he learned obedience through the things that he suffered. Now, God doesn't want us to suffer, but God will take advantage of every situation in your life to bring you into greater maturity. But if you see the difficult situations in your life and you have a tendency to over-spiritualize them and say, this is the devil and I bind him. Well, God's like, you can bind all you want. You're still walking through this. So you can walk through it, embrace it. And here's what I've learned to do uh, because the only way we grow is through conflict. And many times the conflict we have is relational conflict. That's what we are faced with. You know, we're not being prosecuted or persecuted uh, and fed to the lions. Come on, amen. No one's hunting you down because you're smuggling Bibles into the Middle East. Uh, you're not being, your family's not being shot uh, because you preach the gospel like in different parts of the world right now. That's real persecution. The persecution we feel is, oh, that person didn't say hi to me. And I didn't get invited to the party and now my heart is turning bitter. It's first world problems. Come on. It's issues and they're real but let's put it in perspective. Many of us, the trials that we face are relational issues and relational pain. And I don't need a show of hands for this, but the greatest pain in most of our lives has come from our fathers. The most difficult relations we've had has been with our fathers. And this is why, and listen, that is by design. It's diabolical what the enemies tried to do inside the context of our families and to destroy the relationship that has the ability to impact us as our fathers. Mothers nurture our, our identity. Fathers give us our identity. And so a weo son manifests the heart of the father because he's willing to come close to God. But many times what happens to us is that fear and that vulnerability keeps us from opening up our heart to that one thing. So we just get sharper with our gifts, sharper in the way we dress, sharper in our Bible knowledge, in our doctrine, in our theology, but we never deal with the one thing. So immaturity always comes out when we have conflict with other people. And we're seeing that right now in the body of Christ. We have leaders that are not willing 
to get into conflict because they think that their, their, their lack of confronting things is helping. It's not. Amen. We need we owe sons voices in the body of Christ, in the world right now more than ever. And many times what's happening, we see it that the leaders that we've looked to are great Bible teachers. They're very sharp, but they're not weoses. They're nekioses. Come on. Because they don't want the conflict in their relationships. So if I say something about this, man, I could get canceled. People write nasty things in the comments. Let them write it because you've got to help people. Right. And your heart is not to be right or to win. Your heart is to present truth. And people hate the truth. Right now, haters of truth was one of the things that they talked about. Headstrong folks that we don't need to fight because the word of God will break down every lie. But if we don't speak it from the heart of the Father, we'll never change anybody's life. Just be quiet. Just shut up. You don't need that right now. We don't need it. No, we need your voice as a believer. But we don't need a Nekio's voice. We don't need a Pation voice. We need Weo's voices to rise in the kingdom right now. This is what Matthew 5, 9 says. Come on, Beatitudes. Blessed are the peacemakers. Come on, we need some peacemakers right now. Come on, amen? Come on, y'all turn to your TV. Come on, we need some peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the weos of God. The children of God. The weos are the peacemakers. And this is why only mature sons that carry the Father's heart can step into these conflicts we're seeing right now and bring peace. Because their goal is not to crush the other side. Their goal is to manifest the heart of the Father. Not to be right, not to get people over to their point of view, not to try to crush the opposition and show how stupid they are and outflank them with their information and statistics. But their goal is to win souls and to hurt, and hurt hearts. My goodness, guys. My inbox is lit up with people coming angry at me because I'm, I'm posting simple things from the scriptures, no sides, nothing political, but they're angry. And I never get mad, you know, they get on there and they call me a coon. I'm not sure what that was, how they look it up. <laughs> and I thought, oh, well, I'm for sure not that. And I know if you got to call me names, I already, you know, I've already kind of made my point. Come on. <laughs> no counterpoint, just the name. Coon. <laughs> and I was shocked. I was like, and some of the stuff coming from believers or people that call themselves believers tells me that they're napiosis and there's hurt and they're wounded. And so they feel it's okay to get into strife and okay to get into divisive things and say things to a man of God. And I know, I don't ever get mad because I think and this is your product of not, wherever you were at, no one challenged you to grow. Please let that not be named amongst us here at City Harvest Church. We can be hurt. The Bible says be angry and sin not. We can be angry at what we see right now, but we don't go into sin. We don't go into sin. And I, I can absorb all that because I know who I am. And your comment is not going to change, not going to send me into an identity crisis. Hallelujah. I'm going to be all right. I don't know you. You don't know me. And you saw my way, you want to write something, you know, diabolical about me and say some vulgar things. I'm okay with that because I'm wanting to be a peacemaker. Like I want to carry the father's heart and the father's heart forgives. I forgive you. I don't know why you're doing that. I don't take it personal because I know if you got to resort to that, you're angry, you're hurt. And I've had people write me these long letters and, and, and DM me things, you know, because they have enough respect not to say it in the comments. I appreciate that. But they'll say it in DM, and, and here's my response every single time. I love you. Can we talk? Here's my phone number. Because I, I want to elevate the conversation. Because you can write stuff, and I can write stuff, and I can show you where you're wrong. Or I can get on the phone with you, and I can get you to see my heart. And how much I love you. And I may not agree with you, because sometimes what you're saying is anger and bitterness. And maybe you feel like you have a right to be angry and bitter, but you don't. And so I'll call you out of that anger. 
then I'll call you out of that bitterness as a believer. And I'll say, it's not okay for you to hate your brother like this. I don't care how justified everyone around you says it is. We, O sons, must step into the fray and be peacemakers now. Everybody wants to be a bridge until they get walked on. Bridges. Oh, I would help people get to Christ. Oh, yeah. You know what that looks like? That means you're going to get walked on. Bridges get walked on. People will walk right over you to get to Jesus. Thank you, Pastor Troy, for absorbing all my nonsense and just seeing how when I was angry and loving me anyway. And I'm like, yeah, I still got the footprints on my face to help you get to Christ. But we do. Come on. Amen. That's what mature sons do. Mature people help people get back to God. And it's okay if you want to be angry at me because you don't know him. So you're going to try, lang, triangulate your anger onto the nearest man of God. Yes. And I'm okay with that. Come on, amen. Yeah. Because I want to help you heal and get back to God. And sometimes you want to say that, but you're just trying to test me. Okay? You want to try me. You need to try Jesus. Don't try me. Come on, amen. <laughs> Luke 6. Let me end with this. Luke 6. This is what the Bible says, six, Luke 6, 35 and 36. He says, but love your enemies. Whew. Come on now. That's we owe stuff right there. Love your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, for you shall be the we of the highest, the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. But therefore, but be therefore merciful as your father is also merciful. Come on, worship team, help me out now. This is what I want to get us to see. Listen, we're, we are being challenged as Christians right now to a higher level of love. Jesus did it in the scriptures. And if you're walking with Jesus, he's going to do it to you again. This is what happened in the scriptures is Jesus, when he first came to the disciples and they were all pations, Right. He said to them very simply, he said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm-hmm. Come on, amen? Yeah. And that's a level of love. But the implication is, is I'm letting you set the standard yeah. of love. Because how much do you love yourself? Love your neighbor to that. That's Jesus' way of being gracious about where we're at in our maturity. No one can expect you to love people more than you love yourself. And if you're struggling with loving people, this is what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to reveal that you don't know who you are. You don't love yourself. You don't love what God's doing in your life. You don't know what you've been forgiven of. That's why it's hard for you to forgive. You don't know how much God has loved you. That's why it's hard for you to love and forgive other people. So he set this standard for us to be able to grow. But then later on, in the end of his journey with the disciples and they were supposed to come, they're coming into being weoses. He gives them a different standard. He says, now love each other as you have seen me, the father love me, so love other people. That's different. He said at the cross, he's going, he's gone to the cross. He's seen, they've seen the sacrifice. And he says, the, the way you've seen the father love me and me love the father That's the way I want you to love each other. That's not love your neighbor as yourself, guys. That's a heart that has allowed God to deal with the anger issues, with the things in our life that are keeping us from maturing. That's a heart that's had to say, God, I can't overcome this. I need the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen, we don't grow through laying on of hands, those blessings, come on. Messages impact us, provoke us to go deeper with God, but we have to walk it out. And the reason we get stuck is because we don't allow the Holy Spirit. We don't surrender to the Holy Spirit. We don't become vulnerable with him. And this is what I'm asking you, challenging you about today. It's not enough for you to be a, a, a Pation or a Technon or a Neokos right now. Those kind of Christians, those kind of sons, God will love you, will be blessed, you'll have personal authority. You'll never use it for anyone else, you'll only use it for yourself. But that's, that's the whole idea, that God needs the weos sons to rise. He needs another level out of us as believers. I don't want to be trodden underfoot. I don't want to be made fun of 
on TV. I don't want someone to, I want them to go, there's something these Christians are doing that we need to learn from. That's what I want to start to hear. I don't want to, I don't want to turn on my Facebook page and see any of you engaged in arguments and fights that don't pay nothing. Come on. David was smart enough when he faced Goliath. He's like, what do I get for killing this giant? Come on, amen. He don't, he don't be busy fighting battles that don't pay anything. You won, but what did you win? You won the argument, but you lost the friend. You lost the relationship. Because that's technon stuff. That's Neoko stuff. That's not Weos behavior. And we have to come up. Come on. This is a clarion call for everybody sitting in this room, everybody watching this broadcast right now, that you're sitting at home and you're trying to figure out how to come back on someone that said something and how to be clever in your comments. You're missing the point of what this time and this season is about. What God is wanting to do with all of us is bring us into a place of maturity as we are sons that carry the heart of the Father into a world that is crying out for us. The Bible says that the, the creation is groaning and travailing and it's waiting for the manifestation of the wheels of God. Don't mistake what God is doing right now in your life. You're, it's all about maturity right now. Everything that he's doing, he's preparing us for the greatest season that we've ever gonna see in this country and in the world for the church of God. We must rise as believers into a place of maturity. We must rise, we must rise. We cannot get stuck any longer. Come on, stand up with me. Now, let's pray together. Hallelujah. Just softly, guys. Father, we pray for every person here under the sound of my voice, every person watching this broadcast. Lord, arrest us in our immaturity. Holy Spirit, convict us for wherever we're at on this scale of sonship. Lord, help us to walk not as nepioses or pations or technons or neokoses but lord help us move into full sons and help us walk and manifest the heart of our father because we have allowed god to come near to us and deal with our nonsense lord it's not about being right or being the smartest one in the room or having all the answers lord it's about our heart that we manifest the heart of the father into the earth Come on, lift your hands all over the room right now. Holy Spirit is moving. Holy Spirit, walk into us. Expose the one thing like the rich young ruler that is keeping us. The one mindset, the one idea, the one thing that we refuse to surrender. The one place in our heart where we're still struggling because we have not brought down every barrier and wall. We've not gotten rid of the legalism, so we're still trying to fix ourselves. And we've not surrendered it to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I know what that is, and I thank you for what you're working in my life. And I know that you love everyone the same. You cannot love us more on our best day than you can on our worst day. Your love is consistent and never changes. But Lord, we need that in our hearts. Bring us into being we owe sons, God. Help us mature in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, right now, he's putting his finger on things. And if you're paying attention now in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is talking about that person, that relationship, that conflict. He's talking to you about things that you thought, well, I'm okay, I'm growing, I'm sharp, I'm learning the Bible, but God is saying it's not enough. You'll just grow into a wheat and eat neokos. But he wants you to grow into a weos. It's time. It's time. It's time to deal. It's time to bring down walls, stop the legalism, and allow the Holy Spirit to work to work in our life and to move in our life. Lord, we surrender these things to you. We thank you for maturing us in this time of confinement, this time of COVID. We're not going to come out of this weaker and more unstable, more depressed. We're going to come out of this more mature because we know what our Father is doing right now. He's trying to raise us up to be a voice in this time and trying to make us a part of the remnant that he is going to use to change the world. Lord, I pray for hearts to be provoked to a new level of love, a new level of maturity, and to throw off, Lord, this 
technon behavior, this neocoast behavior, and to come into the fullness of our sonship, full sons, mature sons, walking in our inheritance, which is power, influence, impact, and yes, blessing. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, amen and amen. Come on, give God a clap in here now. God bless you. Hallelujah, and thank you. We're going to have to see you next week. Have a blessed week and know that God is with you. And let the wheel sons of God arise in Jesus' name. God bless you guys. Amen. If you have made a decision to follow Christ today, please let us know by texting the word FOLLOW to 949-446-1110. We would love to help you celebrate by sending you a free gift. Thank you so much for tuning in. On the screen, there are two QR codes, one to stay updated on events and the other one to follow us on your favorite social media platform. We look forward to seeing you next week.